everyone, and welcome to our webinar on our Pipeflow modeling software's applications in the food and beverage industry. You'll notice right off the bat, we do have a bit of a new look. Uh, the name you used to be familiar with, AFT, we are now a part of the Data Core Engineering Software Group. So here's the agenda that we'll be covering today. We'll have a quick introduction of who I and Jacob, my partner on this call, are. Uh, a little bit about our data core pipe flow modeling software, some food and beverage specific applications. Uh, then Jacob will hop into a demonstration of the software, and then I'll close out with some key takeaways and resources. So a quick introduction on who we are. My name is Peter Farnham. I'm a senior account executive here at data core and Jacob Jung is one of our trusted application support engineers. We're both graduates in mechanical engineering and engineering management from the University of Colorado Boulder. So our software has been around for over 30 years. We're present in over 100 different com uh, countries, 100 different universities, and we have over 30 distributor partners around the world who sell our software. Our software can be used in any industry that you could imagine that has pipes and fluids moving through them. You'll see at the bottom, obviously today, we're focusing on the food and beverage industry, but the, the applications for our software are limitless. Here's a quick overview of all of our products. We have Fathom, Aero, Impulse, and Extreme. We like to split these up by our incompressible flow solvers, as well as our compressible flow solvers, and then our steady state applications and our transient applications. So Fathom is gonna be our most common product. That's for our steady state incompressible flow applications. Then we have Aero on the compressible steady state uh, counterpart. Then Impulse is meant for your water hammer and surge applications, and Extreme deals with high speed acoustic transients for your gases and gas and steam systems. Then at the right, you'll notice some of our add-on modules. We have our extended time simulation, which is an add-on module for both Fathom and Arrow. This will take a series of steady state time snapshots through a time varying event in your system. And we refer to these often as slow transients. Then we have our goal seeking control module, both an add-on for Fathom and Arrow. Uh, this is very similar to the Excel goal seek functionality with some enhanced features. Uh, it allows you to define various different variables in order to achieve goals in your system to eliminate the need for any sort of manual iteration. Then the bottom two, we have settling slurries that we can handle in both steady state and transient with Fathom and Impulse. And we have our pulsation frequency analysis tool for Impulse and Extreme to handle things like reciprocating equipment and resonant frequencies in your system. So for some food and beverage specific applications, our software is used around the world in many different plants. Uh, for example, we have uh, our software used in dairy plants, meat processing, beverages, sauces and spreads, grains and berries, and gas and steam. So later on, Jacob will be presenting a model on a pasteurization system, and that will show you how the pasteurization comes into play. So we understand that the food and beverage industry is heavily regulated. You need to meet hygienic codes. You need, your systems need to be efficient and you need to be obviously cost effective. So our software can help better than things like spreadsheets to make your systems, you know, reduce downtime, any sort of costly redesigns and just help you design better and better systems. And then as mentioned in the product overview, we don't only handle the steady state applications. We do have things like heat transfer, slurry modeling, Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, uh, water hammer and surge applications. And since we know a lot of your plants do have fire water systems, we do uh, help with NFPA compliance in our software. So now I'm going to pass it over to Jacob for a demonstration of a pasteurization model in our software. And I'm going to go to the next slide. This is going to be the system that we're presenting. And now I'll pass it over to Jacob. Yeah. So uh, the system today that we're going to look at, we're primarily going to look at the, the line of the milk uh, beginning from 1A, moving its way all the way through 11 of this model. Uh, 1A, we start at the balance tank. Uh, from there, we move on to a feed pump that pushes the milk through. 
and then we hit this heat exchanger that we're going to hit later. Uh, it, on the other side of the, heat, of the heat exchanger has both cooling and heating water. Uh, from there, we're going to hit the PD pump and it slowly uh, raises the temperature of this milk. And from the PD pump, we lead into a steam injection system. Uh, this is kind of where the pasteurization happens. Uh, downstream of that is going to be number six, that holding tube where we hold the uh, pasteurized milk for a uh, for a number for like uh, 15 to 30 seconds just to make sure that the pasteurization is good and make sure that it's still a liquid. Uh, we move it through the system. Uh, once we hit seven, the expansion chamber, that's just for the, the increased pressure that we do for, this, for the milk. Uh, and from there, we move it along to a, another centrifugal pump. We pump it through the homogenizer. Uh, the homogenizer pretty much just makes sure that the milk isn't separating, you know, after being, you know, treated with all that high heat. Uh, it feeds back into the heat exchanger system, hitting that cool water so that we can begin, so we can begin to cool it down. And then finally, at the at the end, at eleven, we hit both a holding and a filling tank. Uh, but this is just on paper. Let me move this over to the model. So on my screen, uh, it's pretty much the same. Set up. Uh, we try to keep the junctions and pipe numbers pretty similar, so it's easy to follow. Again, we go through the balance tank, uh, just another reservoir junction, and we work through uh, the feed pump. Uh, these two heat exchangers are acting as the the same heat exchanger that I talked talked about earlier, both the the heating side and the cooling side. Uh, each of these pipes. What's very important to note is that since we're working with a non-Newtonian fluid, uh, this is a custom fluid milk. Uh, in the fluid list, we can add this fluid and add in our own properties that we want. So there's data, there's enthalpy data, there's density, viscosity, and we even have uh, specific heats, vapor pressures, thermal conductivity. Uh, for our purpose, we also changed the viscosity model to a non-Newtonian model, so we chose the power law. And just because we know the the, the fluid's going to be moving at a decently not, not, not a super fast rate, but we know that there could be some slow moving fluids in our system. We applied those uh, viscosity and low, uh, low Reynolds number corrections that we have built into the system. Uh, pretty much as we follow along the line, we can see that in the fluid properties of our pipes, uh, we have that custom fluid milk and we set it to uh, 20 degrees here. And as we move along the system, uh, after this heat exchanger, it should increase to 70 degrees and then past the steam injector. Once we're in the holding tube here, we hit 90 degrees Celsius. So this is where the pasteurization happens and the steam injector here. Uh, we're just modeling the hydraulics. So it's adding five uh, cubic meters uh, per hour to the flow rate. And then as we move along, we can see that uh, the fluid stays at 90, we hit the expansion chamber. Slowly along, it should begin to cool down as we run along. And then finally, once we hit the, the final lines for the storage and filling tanks, uh, we're back to our 20 degrees Celsius uh, starting point for our milk. Um, just a quick rundown is, I have a few scenarios here. So our scenario manager makes it pretty easy to uh, work uh, and model multiple scenarios that you want to do. Uh, for example, if we're going to do a pipe sizing here, uh, I, I have a uh, I have a scenario where I set all of the non engine or all of the side pipeline sizing sizes to three inch pipes. Uh, the only ones excluded here will be the holding tube, uh, pipe six, and pipe eleven. These are all set to be one one inch, two and a half inch, and then two inches, I believe, two and a half inch. Oh, and 4.75 for the whole thing too. But the rest of the model, the pipeline sizing is gonna be three inches here, and then we can run our model. And we can easily get our results and double check and see what's wrong, see if there's any warnings that we don't like. Um, scenario manager makes it pretty easy where uh, I've did this ahead of time, but we can obviously go back and then run the same exact model that we have, except with the modified uh, pipe sizes. So two and a half inches now. And it easily gives us results here too. And uh, when 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 your uh, scenario is marked blue, that means that there is an output saved to it. So this leads to, you know, easily switching back and forth between uh, outputs. So there's not a lot of confusion there. 
Um, I think the size that we set, settled on for this model was actually two inch pipe size. So this, this, these are the final results. Uh, we have a color map here showcasing uh, the pressure static maximum of uh, the system in total. So we can see that we start at a lower pressure, we pump it up, we hit that lower pressure, then we begin to add more pressure. Uh, after the steam injector, then we're working our way back and then we're pumping through uh, the rest of the system back to the heat exchanger. So we're filling and holding tanks. Um, we have another scenario here where uh, you can adjust, uh, let's say we wanna adjust the components of a junction instead of a pipe. So here we have a fixed speed of 100% in our main scenarios up here. So let's say we wanna try a different speed. Uh, we can run 95% here and get similar results and see, uh, see what we want. There's a pump summary, there's heat exchanger summary, res reservoir summary. So overviews for all the junctions that we have. Uh, from here, um, I believe if we run the 85%, the model won't run. Uh, the 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 there are the model will run, but there will be warnings. So here we have the GSC module. Uh, for this case, I've set I've set a goal for pipe two to hit two point eight bar here, and the variable that we're going to be able to adjust here is the feed pump speed. And so I'll hit OK here, and the GSC module is an add-on, and it's just uh, it's here to simplify and uh, like optimize the work that you're doing with scenarios. If we run it here, we find a speed, I believe it should be around 96% pump speed here. So this to achieve our goal, which yeah, 2.8 bar, which we did, uh, we're gonna have to have this, the pump at a speed of 96.47%. Uh, GSC kind of just cuts the fat, it kind of trims the, the work that you do with scenarios. You can make a lot of scenarios and do a lot of different testing, but GSC is helpful, you know, when you have a lot of them all at once. Uh, one more feature I wanted to showcase is we have uh, batch runs. If you have a lot of scenarios, you know, starting a batch run, you can select multiple scenarios at once and start your run. And it should quickly run all four of those scenarios just, you know, in a batch. Um, while this is running, uh, I also want to mention the Excel export function that we have. Um, you know, working through your model, uh, you might want to have all of your output in a simplified spreadsheet, which could be nice. Uh, we go here. So file, import, X. sorry. We hit the Excel export manager and we open up here. Uh, we can select the tabs for our pipes and for our junctions. If we hit okay. Oh, I think it's gonna pop up on a different screen. But from here, we are able to easily export uh, all of your output data to uh, Excel. It should make it easier to uh, it should make it easier to to compare your data against test data, field data, all of that, all of that. And yeah, so it's uh, you can select multiple uh, rows that you want, specific uh, specific junction rows, uh, specific parameters. Uh, it's really up to you. World is your oyster here. Um, oh, and one more thing is I wanted to bring up uh, impulse. Uh, so impulse, like Peter said, is our transient, uh, more of a surge analysis program. Uh, if you do want to bring this model file over. Uh, if we go to downloads, we see that we're still in .imp files. If we move this over to .fth files, we can actually find that pasteurization model and then import it over into uh, Impulse. I think that's all I have for today. Let me throw it over back to Peter. Awesome. Thanks, Jacob. Let me steal the screen back. All right, just a few things to close out this webinar. Uh, I wanted to touch on just a few points that Jacob had had mentioned just to hammer them home. 
So our software, the, the model you saw Jacob working with was fairly small and fairly simple, uh, but we can do everything from basic 2D sectional models to even isometric. And then on the far right uh, is actually a really large data center model. So th these models can be scaled from just a few pipes all the way up to hundreds and thousands of pipes. And Jacob also touched a bit on our color map features. So you can either just label your pipes as certain colors to help color code and uh, report on what your system is doing, or you can make color maps to report on, you, know, you can set, say, blue is a low pressure and red is a high pressure, and your, your system will calculate that and let you view your system in that regard. And then for our transient solvers, we do have features such as animations to help you visualize those transient events as say like a pump starts up or trips or a valve opens or closes. And then just to hammer this home one more time, we do have you know, things like very simple, normal models, things that can get a little bit more complex. And then those two that I just cycled through are actually part of this larger complex model. So you can see how easy it is to scale this to a large complex model. So next steps after this, uh, we do have quite a few resources for you guys to check out. So on our website, you can review case studies and technical papers. This webinar, among with our library of over 200 other webinars, are all going to be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, we also have guided demos available, uh, as well as extensive documentation and examples that you can work through or help you troubleshoot your models. And then also, if, if you meet with us, we can provide you with a free evaluation license, too, if you want to test this out for your own systems. This webinar today was fairly short and sweet, uh, but we do want to thank you for attending. Here is our contact information here on the screen, uh, datacore.com. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can reach out to sales at datacore.com or our phone number down below there. Uh, you at that phone number, you can reach our sales team, our support team, our finance team, any of the above, you can reach at 719-686-1000. So thank you all for joining and I hope you have a good day.